Hey guys, welcome to Solve My Math Homework. You know, we're the YouTube channel that solves the math problems our subscribers send in. So today we have a problem. The, the subject line said calculus, but I'm gonna throw this in calc and in geometry. It's three-dimensional geometry, and it asks for the standard equation of a sphere given the endpoints of the diameter. So let's remind ourselves what we're looking at, okay? We are looking at a, um, a sphere. We've got the endpoints of the diameter, so we've got the endpoints right about here, right, and here. And that's great because the two things that we need, we're gonna remind ourselves, are gonna be that center point. We need the center point and we need the radius. And we can find both of those things from the diameter. So let's go ahead and look at the equation of the standard form so we know what the heck we're gonna find, okay? All right, so the equation of a sphere, and it should really look familiar, because if you look at this portion, portion of it, if you just took x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, that was the equation for a circle with the center at hk, right? So when we are dealing with a sphere, we're dealing with one more dimension, we're dealing with a three-dimensional circular figure, so we have to add that next dimension, and that next dimension comes in the form of z minus l squared. So when we're looking at this, it should not look too unfamiliar to us. I mean, it looks a little ugly because we're not dealing, we're not used to dealing with three dimensions. But the center of this sphere, and I know it's not flat, so we're gonna call it a center point, okay? Because remember, it's gonna be in the center of the sphere, is going to be h, k, l, all right? So let's go ahead and really talk about what they've given us, all right? They have given us, um, I don't need that page. We, okay, let's go back. They have given us the two endpoints of the diameter. And from that, we could find the radius and we could find the center point. We could find the radius by taking the distance of the endpoint, uh, the endpoint, so the distance of the diameter divided by two. But let's start with finding that midpoint, okay? Because when we look at this equation, when we look at what we need for the equation of a sphere, we need two things. We need that center point and we need the radius. It doesn't really matter what order we go in. So let's go ahead and just pick a place to start. So we've got negative two, remember zero, four, as one end point of our diameter and the other one is two, six, eight, okay? And how are we gonna find the center? Well, think of a flat circle, okay? Think of just a circle, and if you had the endpoints A, B of the diameter, you would need to get the center by what? Well, you would take the midpoint of that. The midpoint of any diameter is going to be the center. So even though we're dealing in three dimensions, our midpoint is still what we're going to find, okay? So the midpoint, and if we remember, when we found the midpoint in two dimensions, it was just a coordinate point where we added the x values and divided by two, we found the average of the x's. Then we did the same thing with y. So we found the average of the y coordinates. We did this, well, we didn't do the same thing. But now we have one more dimension, so we're going to do the same thing with the third dimension. We're gonna do the same thing with our z coordinates. So to find the midpoint, we are going to find the midpoint of the diameter, just like we did in two-dimensional geometry for the center of a circle. We're doing it with three dimensions, so guess what? We have the z's here. All right, so let's just get this down. So when we look at our x coordinates, and I'll start in green, negative two plus two, well, that's gonna give us zero. Negative two plus two divided by two, we'll deal with that later, but I think we both know what that's gonna be, or we all know what that's gonna be. Hopefully there's not just one person watching this. All right, now let's work on the y's. So my y coordinate one here is zero, y coordinate two is six. So zero plus six, we'll take the average of the y coordinates. And let's look at the average of the z coordinates. We have four here, eight here, four plus eight divided by two. That's gonna be a nice coordinate point, right? It's gonna be a three-dimensional coordinate, and it's going to be what? Let's see, negative two plus two is zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. Zero plus six divided by two is three. And four plus eight is 12 divided by two is six. So there we go. We have our center of zero, three, six. So, we have our center, we have our center. Actually, let's go back up to the very, very first slide because I think this is gonna be helpful. So we have our center of zero, three, six. Now we need our radius. So our radius, remember, that's going to be a distance. So radius is going to be the distance from, let's think about it, distance from the center 
to any or to either, because there's only two, to either endpoint. And which endpoint am I talking about? The diameter, the only one we have. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. We're gonna take the distance from the center to either of the endpoints, and we're going to go ahead and get our radius. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take the first point. There's really no reason for me to take one point over the other. You could use either point. If you really hate negative numbers, you could use the 268. So we wanna find the distance between negative two, zero, four, and our center, zero, three, six. If we do not remember, I can remind you what our distance formula is. Remember distance, two-dimensional distance. You took x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared. Remember this came from the Pythagorean theorem. Three dimensions, we're just gonna add that next dimension, z minus z1 squared, okay? So let's go ahead and get this down. When we look at our x's, we've got negative two minus zero, so we have negative two minus zero squared plus, let's look at our y's, zero minus three squared plus z coordinates, four minus six squared. Let's clean it up, negative two squared, it doesn't matter that it's negative two or that it's negative, but I'm going to put it anyway, negative two squared plus Again, doesn't matter that it's negative, but we're gonna put negative three squared plus negative two squared. And why doesn't it matter that it's negative? Because we're going to square them and we're going to go ahead and get positives when we square them. All right, so what is negative two squared? Negative two squared is four. So we're gonna have the square root of four plus negative three squared is nine. So negative four plus nine plus negative two squared is four again. So we're going to get the square root of 17. All right, sounds good so far. So we have a radius of square root of 17. We have a center that we already found of 0, 3, 6. All we have to do is pop it into that equation. I'll remind you what that is. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared equals r squared. So let's pop everything in and we will be done with this problem. Okay, so we've got x minus zero squared, really it's just x squared, you could put x minus zero squared if you want, plus y minus, whoops, what am I writing? I should be writing three, that did not look like a three. y minus three squared plus z minus six squared equals r squared. Okay, don't mess this up. This is really actually, it's pretty much the only pitfall in this problem. When people square radicals, sometimes they forget squaring a radical, squaring and square rooting are opposite operations. So when we square the square root of 17, we simply get 17. There you have it. We are done. We have written the standard form of the sphere given the endpoints of negative two, zero, four, and two, six, eight. Remember, I only solved this problem because a subscriber sent it in. So if you're not a subscriber, why not? Hit subscribe, send me your crappy problems. I'll do those too. Thanks for watching.